Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Good morning. Good morning indeed. We are up pretty massively on the day. Uh, let's just jump over uh, to the charts. You can kind of see in the last four hours we've gone up from 62,000 to just over 65,000 in just the last four hours. So big news uh, coming out today about inflation. Um, there's some other news that is, has come out in the last day or so. I'm going to get into all of that, guys. But first, as always, please consider going over to Olive Branch uh, Animal Sanctuary. These guys are very small, guys. So go over and help the, these animals out. Get some karma. Do uh, some some donations. Get get that donation for uh, a tax break. So everything good here, guys. You're gonna help help out some needy, abused, and ab abandoned animals, and you're gonna get a tax break. So um, I do have this link as well as all of these links in your or in the description of the video. We've got a debt, a medical debt fundraiser, um, Instagram, Facebook, Amazon, and Chewy wish lists. If you want to send them something that they need from Amazon or Chewy, we've got a PayPal and a Venmo here. So go over, help them out, and yeah, I appreciate everything that you guys can do for them. It really, really is an important thing to do. All right, so let's get into the news. Today, we had CPI come out. Now, yesterday we had PPI, which was another inflation measure. Uh, PPI yesterday came out rising a little bit, but CPI, guys, is the um, kind of the Fed's go-to on, on inflation. And this uh, article says price, uh, Bitcoin price taps 64,700 as US CPI shows core inflation at three year low. So we haven't been this low on inflation for CPI in three years. Now, guys, <laughs> I called this. Uh, so if, if you guys remember back talking about the Fed and CPI, um, I believe it was just the last Fed meeting that I kind of covered. I, I, I said, you know, the, the banks or the, the federal bank wants, Jerome Powell wants to cut rates. They have to cut rates because banks are starting to fail. And that is the number one thing when it comes down to it. Public confidence in the banking system is Jerome Powell's number one thing like he has to do that so i said you know i wouldn't be surprised if the fed started manipulating cpi numbers again like they did in the 70s you know we have the economy going down and inflation going up and i said i wouldn't be surprised if cpi numbers were uh kind of fudged a little bit and to watch CPI in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if we magically see those numbers coming down. And they are. And guess what? They are fudging the numbers. They took uh, coffee for sure out of the CPI data. Now, coffee is relevant because it in the last month or so, coffee has seen a 28% inflation on coffee. So the, so the Fed was like, eh, let's get rid of that one and see if we, we can fudge the numbers a little bit. I don't know what else they took out of CPI, but back in the 70s, guys, you'll remember that, or in the early 80s, they took out housing from CPI, this needs-based inflation. So now they're manipulating the numbers. They're, they're kind of picking and choosing what they want in CPI. And now all of a sudden today, the Fed looks like inflation is coming down. And now they, they're, they're, 
they're setting things up to feel justified in cutting rates so they can help bail out those banks. You know, if, if they keep these rates up higher for longer, these banks are going to fail. And Jerome knows this. Um, I actually, Jerome Powell spoke yesterday. He was uh, over in the Netherlands talking to their central bank uh, head. And I watched some of that speech and he was, he was actually asked yesterday, how much, uh, how, how was it worded? Um, she asked him, how big was public perception for banks? And Jerome Powell came at, right out and said it, you know, despite his dual mandate of keeping inflation down and helping the economy, he came out right out and said it yesterday. It is of paramount importance that people, uh, public perception in the banks, meaning public confidence in the banks is paramount. It's the number one thing for the Federal Reserve. And he came right out and said it yesterday. So I've been saying that for a while, guys. But let's go back over. There's an article that just came out yesterday from Reuters. It says U.S. bank failures could surge by almost 50. Now, 50 is big. That would definitely signal contagion in the bank industry. You know, if you remember back in 2023, I think we had three or four, maybe five banks that failed last year. And this year we've had one or two. So if we saw 50 banks failing, oh man, I, I, that would not be good. I mean, it would, it would definitely raise uh, awareness of Bitcoin and getting out of banks, but that would not be good, guys. So I don't know that we know this is happening. Jerome Powell knows this is happening. He refuses to acknowledge the latest bank failure. Nobody is asking him that question. Um, and I, I think he, he doesn't want to spook the market, obviously, but he knows it's going on and he wants to cut rates, which honestly, to me, Cutting rates or raising rates or staying the rate, rates the same doesn't matter, honestly, to me. I don't want to see inflation go up further, and that's what cutting rates will do. But, you know, cutting rates also helps, helps risk as, uh, assets like Bitcoin, and it inflates the dollar and, and makes assets more valuable as well so it's good on that that end but it's bad you know nobody wants to go to the grocery store and spend twenty dollars on a loaf of bread or you know ten dollars at the gas pump or you know so either way it's it's good for for bitcoin it's bad for anyone who isn't invested in assets like like bitcoin though so i don't I don't like to see inflation go up, uh, but it seems pretty inevitable because the banks are, have this, uh, um, they have this allocation to commercial real estate that is just crashing right now. And, and the Fed has to do something to, to bail those banks out. And we saw just a few weeks ago, the treasury is actually helping bail out those banks they're offering a buyback on treasuries, but I think it's going to have to be more than that um, to stop this, you know, 50 banks that are at risk. Um, there was another article a few weeks ago that said hundreds of banks were at risk. So anyways, guys, this is really funny. If you remember back in my previous video about Vanguard, Vanguard came out very heavily against the Bitcoin ETFs. And a few weeks later, mysteriously, the CEO at BlackRock announced his res resignation. And it was 
I, I came out in that video signaling that, you know, maybe this was backlash from coming out so hard against Bitcoin. And it appears that that may have been the case because look, Vanguard appoints Bitcoin friendly, former BlackRock ETF lead as CEO. So they've, they've kind of gotten rid of the anti-Bitcoin CEO and now they've brought in this guy from BlackRock that, look, I'm gonna read this to you. Ram G, uh, so the CEO, his name is, uh, what is his name? Is it not even gonna give me his first name? Oh, Salim Ram Ramji. So Ramji, who is 25, has 25 years of experience in the industry, previously led BlackRock's global exchange traded fund business, overseeing the launch of its iBit Spot Bitcoin ETF. So this isn't just a friendly Bitcoin uh, guy that's getting into uh, the, the CEO spot. He actually ran BlackRock's iBit, the Bitcoin ETF. So <laughs> it's just wild, guys. Wild. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we completely see Vanguard flip on their Bitcoin ETF stance now. I mean, all the moving parts kind of suggest that anyways. Okay, more news. Um, guys, things like this have been coming out just daily for the last few weeks, but state of Wisconsin buys nearly 100 million worth of BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. So states are now buying Bitcoin. Now, Wisconsin is putting this in their pension fund, uh, which Arizona has had discussions on whether they want to buy Bitcoin for their pension fund as well. I don't know if they've come to the uh, conclusion that they should or shouldn't, but they are wanting to. Now we have Wisconsin coming out. I want to scroll down here to this quote by Eric Palchunas. It says, normally you don't get these big fish institutions in the 13 Fs for a year or so when the ETF gets more liquidity. But as we've seen, these are no ordinary launches. Bloomberg Intelligence senior ETF analyst Eric Balchunas wrote in a post on X, good sign, expect more as institutions tend to move in herds. And, you know, this was part of, this came out as part of this 13F report, this quarterly report. And that's what I'm saying, guys, is we've seen all these quarterly reports coming out recently with just all kinds of institutions, hedge funds, banks uh, that are owning Bitcoin. JP Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo all show um, Bitcoin on their quarterly reports. Now, as far as the banks go, especially JP Morgan, those numbers that they claim on their 13F uh, are probably due to their, um, their being um, participants in the Bitcoin ETFs, which means they have to kind of hold cash and Bitcoin to be active participants in those ETFs. Probably those banks, it probably doesn't signal that they are buying Bitcoin yet, but they are involved in those Bitcoin ETFs. So they, they do have to report those. But there is a lot more, um, you know, hedge funds and big uh, management funds that are, are starting to buy these ETFs. Okay, so lastly, guys, <laughs> I've got kind of a funny thing. So you guys remember the videos I've done on Peter Schiff and Peter Schiff came by the channel, watched my videos, commented, and now he over on Twitter, uh, this was May 11th, he, he did a post that said, 
I get a kick out of Bitcoin fanatics who accuse me of secretly owning Bitcoin, but refusing to publicly wear the ribbon. They are just so drunk on the Kool-Aid that they can't accept that I legitimately disagree with their perspective. I just don't see the, the emperor's new clothes. Now, Peter, if, I mean, obviously I was part of what inspired that tweet, but the, the point here that Peter's missing is I don't care if you own or own Bitcoin or not, that the problem I have is that you've used it. You know, there's utility, you know, there's value, but that is the one thing you will never admit is that Bitcoin actually has value. I don't care if you own it or not. Honestly, I hope you don't. Uh, but the, the thing, the real funny thing, guys, is this was on May 11th. One day later, Parma struck Peter. And let me just uh, get back to his main feed. We're going to scroll up. One day later, on the 12th, Peter came out with a tweet that said, Since Puerto Rican regulators decided to put my bank in receivership, over three months before they did it, why didn't they let the bank and its customers know in advance? The bank could have returned 100% of the customer's funds prior to receivership. All deposits were held in cash. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, I didn't know that Peter Schiff owned a bank. Apparently, he owns this bank in Puerto Rico. and which that alone is very telling because Bitcoin kind of threatens banks because now you can self custody your own wealth where banks kind of thrive on that, uh, you know, deposits, right? So that explains a lot. I've never actually heard anyone ask him about his bank that he apparently owns in Puerto Rico, which really kind of tells you a lot on why he might be also against Bitcoin. Not only does he hold gold, which is kind of the, the analog version of Bitcoin, but now he, uh, he owns a bank. Uh, so no surprise that he's against Bitcoin, but the karma here is that one day before he's, he's talking bad about Bitcoin, and then the very next day, his bank is put in receivership, which means the federal regulators took it out of their control and, and kind of seized all of their assets. And the irony here, guys, is Bitcoin prevents that kind of thing. So Peter should maybe see some value in, in Bitcoin now but I wouldn't hold your breath. Um, honestly, <laughs> the guy is, is destined to go down with the ship, but it's, it's, it's sad because a lot of people probably lost their funds or at least at very least got their funds tied up with these federal regulators. Now they can't uh, withdraw their funds from Peter's bank and and Peter's, you know, super mad about it. Um, you know, it's all he's been really talking about for the last few days. Which is kind of nice because it, it's, it's the first time in quite a while that he's taken a break from bagging on Bitcoin. But I don't know, Peter, karma, karma, boy. If, if you would have been in Bitcoin, you wouldn't have had your, your assets frozen. So anyways, guys, let's jump back over. I want to show you guys something in the charts. Let's go over here. You can see, as, as I was saying earlier, we've jumped up. Right now, we're about 64.7. But let me just kind of scroll out here. And the first thing I want to show you guys 
is this massive bull flag. So a bull flag is something that you have this massive increase right here, which forms the pull. And then you later have this kind of waving flag. And this is a classic bull flag. This is massive bull flag, which is a huge bullish indicator on, on, on the chart technicals. But it's never fun once you're in this flag and you're kind of waving downwards. It's never like this fun thing. However, this is a, a big bullish thing. Now you can kind of see that I've drawn these these this downward uh, channel that we've been in, but we've been constantly having these these lower lows right here, just constantly having lower lows, and we've been having lower highs. You know, we had this high, a lower high here, a lower high here. Now we are really close to putting in, well, first of all, we had lower low, lower low, lower low. And now we've finally had this higher low right here, just uh, like five days ago. We had this lower low here, and now we're about to put in a higher high here which could signal that we're about to break out of this descending channel and confirm this bull flag to the upside. So I hate, you know, kind of saying that. I, I honestly am not sure we could continue in this for longer. Honestly, after, let's go over to this other chart, after the Bitcoin halvings, which you can kind of see here, this was our Bitcoin having this green line. And usually after halvings, we technically kind of trade sideways for several months. So we could definitely do that. But like I said, this, this chart pattern that is printing is, is very bullish. And it looks like, you know, I'd watch if we print this higher high here especially on the daily. Let's jump over to the daily. If we can print a daily candle that is above this one at 65,513, that would be very bullish for, for the short term anyway. So that's that's probably the area that I'm going to be watching for today. Uh, that'll print 6 p.m. my time, which is Mountain Standard Time. Uh, but if we're above 65.5 at that time, I would probably expect more upside in the short term. So long term, we could continue to go sideways until we feel that supply shock from the halving kicking in. But it should be fun to watch anyways, guys. Um, it's been boring the last few months for sure. And, uh, you know, this, this downward trajectory and this bulb flag has been not very fun. But I have a feeling that we, we have good times ahead of us. So anyways, guys. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video. Remember to go over to Olive Branch Animal Sanctuary and help those animals out, and I will see you in the next video.